Friends, oftentimes, life has a way to deal its bitter cup. Sometimes when it seems as if we're already going through it, it gets worse. I hope somebody knows what I'm talking about. But I'm assured that sometimes it has to get worse before it gets better. For when we're down to nothing, friends, that's the time that faith should tell us that what? God is up to something. For what? No good thing will he withhold from them that walk what? Uprightly. And when you're down flat on your back, friends, when you're down to the guttermost, all you can do is go up. <laughs> music. Now, before I pray, I want to tell you a little story. I think will put us where we need to be. There was the story of some lepers. We know that the gospel must be preached to all the world for a witness. We talked about that today. And so the lepers were there and missionaries after missionaries after missionaries would come and they would speak words of comfort to the, the lepers. But you know, it's one thing for you to be in a position like a leper. <laughs> now, can you identify with a leper? It's hard. You're not going through what you're going through. And really, there was one, and it's a true story too, and there was one Christian man that came there and he saw the lepers suffering and just barely making it. They were suffering because of their illness and um, they needed somebody to minister to them. And so he came and of course there was others that were, you know, telling the lepers about God and from a distance. And the man had a family. Listen to me. He had a family like anybody else. He had children. But he felt a burden to come closer to the leper. To minister to them in a more meaningful way. So you know what he did? He didn't just stay from a distance. He actually joined the lepers. And he ministered to them. And he was there. He bounded up their wounds. He was a doctor. He bounded up their wounds. And he ministered to them. And assisted them when they were suffering. And they felt much relief. And they were so happy to have him there. And one that would really minister to them. And they saw Christ in him. Now, the end of the story is that as a result, the man was ministering to them. He became a leper himself. Now, the question you may ask in your mind is why didn't God perform a miracle to preserve this man? Don't you think that would have been a powerful testimony? You know, think about it with me, right? Wouldn't that be a powerful one to think that this man sacrificed? To minister to them. In fact, one may say Christ was here and he was not infected by leprosy. Couldn't have been something. You know, another, may, another may say it seems almost unjust. You know, I mean, I don't know where we stand on it. To know that he was standing for God. Where was God? Did God forsake him? In his hour. And of course he died a leper. Now we know that man will be in the kingdom by God's grace. But the fact is that he died a leper. I want to say this much to you. That sometimes things don't always work the way how we want it to work. But I want you to turn to your neighbor at this time and say God is still good. The topic this morning is Mara. You know what that word means? Bitter. You know, my friends, it's amazing. And we're about to pray. The essence of what we're about to talk about today is very simple. Whatever comes our way, 
We need to still trust and obey God with the assurance that God indeed has our best interest in mind. He still has an expected end for us. Let us pray. Eternal Father, it is thy time. We pray for mercy, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would indeed speak to us individually as well as collectively. Father, there is so much going on in our world today, but above all, there is so much going on in our lives as individuals. There is brokenness. There is pain. There is suffering. And indeed, Lord, we realize like that Christians are not immune to these things. Like the old saying, we all must die one day. The sinner die, the saint die. The children die, the adult die. And that is not partial. So likewise, we all go through something sometimes. And even at times, we question why we have to go through it. Yet still, Lord, we know that you are still in control. So I pray that you may even now breathe peace upon your people. That we may gather today that you are still the one that is working all things for good for them that love God. May we hold on, therefore, and may we trust you. Knowing, dear God, that you are faithful and alas, that you will alas give us that which we ourselves would want if we could see like how you see. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Exodus 15. Exodus 15 chapter. And I want you to turn with me there in your Bibles. I want to just take the time as you're going there um, just to uh, give thanks. Uh, I see Nathan, brother Nathan in the house and his wife and likewise my dear sister, God bless you. It's very good to see you there. As much prayer as ascended. And you have been called by name. Uh, I really give God thanks for what he is doing. Keep trusting him. He's faithful that has promised. Also, I want to just ask a special prayer request before I dive right in. Next week, me and my wife will be traveling uh, for our training. And we won't be here next Sabbath. So please continue to keep us in your prayers. Amen. Now, Exodus 15, chapter, and by the way, welcome for those online and those that are visiting us in the house. I know God has a blessing in store for us. Exodus 15, 22. That's where we are, Exodus 15 and verse 22. I would like to say before we read that God is an on-time God. And oftentimes, while we are going through a situation, sometimes no one understands. Sometimes we feel all alone. Sometimes we even feel forsaken. Sometimes we feel like, God, where are you in this moment? Why am I going through this? Have you ever felt that way before? I don't know about you. I've felt that way before. In fact, I've questioned God. God, why have you called me to this situation? In fact, couldn't you just inform me since you're the eternal God? Couldn't you just give me a little pinch and let me know that this was ahead of me? I think it would have made a difference as how I would think. But you know, friends, God is too wise to be mistaken. I want to remind you that God is too good to be unkind. Oftentimes, the problem is that we don't understand, but God understands. You see, God just don't see the today. He sees tomorrow and he sees the future. You see, God has an expected end, I want to remind you, for each and every one of us. And whatever we are called to go through in this life, if we have our hand in the hand of God, God will see us through. God will carry us through that storm. God will deliver us. Not sometimes the way we think he should. You know, God have a way. He has, we say a funny way. Of doing things on his own time. In his own way. And I guess that's what makes him God all by himself. 
Sometimes I believe if it, was, if it was up to me, I would say, Lord, just send me down this path. Or you know what? Open this door. Or you know what, Lord? Don't give me this one. Give me this one instead. But you know, brethren, I want to thank God that he's the one still choosing. And if we allow God to choose, we will soon find out that all things work together for good for them that love God. Exodus 15 and verse 22. We want to take the time as we look at this topic, Mara, bitter, to examine three points. In the first place, as we consider Exodus 15, 22, we want to see that God is always with us. Repeat after me. God is always with us. Exodus 15, 22 says, And so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Now, you know, that's a very interesting statement. That Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Now, let's not be confused in any way. Let's make this very clear. Moses was what? The designated individual that God chose to lead Israel. Clear? But Moses did not bring Israel from the Red Sea. You see, it's amazing how at times we forget that God is still with us. In this journey, as they were journeying from the Red Sea to Mara, was about three days journey, which we will see. But what's fascinating is that God was not in some remote, isolated space or place. God was with them. Let me just remind you that it was the same God that came by the pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. He was the one that strew, strewed the dead bodies of the enemies of God's people, which was still fresh in their minds. The Red Sea was there. It was a constant reminder that God was all-powerful and he came through for his people in their moment of need. In their moment of desperation, when it seems as if there was no way, God literally, literally opened the Red Sea for them. And God made a way. Why? Because he was with them. God was leading them on this journey. Let me just assure you that God is still leading you in your journey. It may not always be easy, but God is right there with you. He sees every tears. He understands your pain. God understands what you're going through. And he's saying, I'm with you. I am right here. How soon it is easy for us to turn our attention to the physical one that God has chosen rather than to look to the one that is leading. It is so interesting that the scripture says that Moses brought the people. But God was with them. The pillar of his presence was with them. And he went before them. And when we read carefully from Patriots and Prophets, we are told from the Red Sea, the host, Patriots and Prophets 291, paragraph 1, from the Red Sea, the host of Israel again set forth on their journey under the guidance of the pillar of cloud. Now, who was leading them? It was God. Moses was only looking to that cloud, and he would lead them as the cloud led him. It's oftentimes easy to look to the one that is leading, oftentimes negating the fact that he is still looking to the one that is truly leading. Follow what I'm saying. Friends, I'm not saying that we shouldn't look to our leaders. But I'm saying we're not perfect examples. And most of the time, all we can do is go to the one that can really help on our knees. 
We need to keep in mind, friends, that God is with us. God has not forsaken us. He is with us in our journey, whatever we are going through. The Lord is with us, friends. And so we see that the first place that God is still with us. He has promised he will never leave us nor forsake us. When we pass through the fire, he will be with us. Even the rivers, he'll not cause it to overflow us. When we pass through the fire, he will not allow us to be burned. Sometimes it feels that way, doesn't it? It feels like, Lord, where are you? But I want to tell you this morning that he is the same place he was when the three Hebrew boys was cast into the fire. You see, sometimes God don't deliver us out of the fire, but deliver us in the fire. That means there's still a crucible for us to go through. Oh, yes, friends. God is with us, but we realize that truly there's still something for us to endure. But we can take courage to know that God is the one in control of the temperature gauge. You see, if it was ever, the enemy would be burnt up. Oftentimes, the silversmith and those that purify metal knows how in that crucible just right heat to be applied. For me and you, it seems a tremendous heat. For you know what, friends? It cannot be too low. For then it cannot separate the impurities from the pure metal. But at the same time, if it's too high, it will consume the metal altogether. Let me tell you, God knows what he's doing. God is with us, friends. He has not forsaken us. And he will be with us to the end. God has an expected end for his people. And so notice what it says that Moses, continuing to read, Moses brought the children of Israel from Egypt, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now, that's like almost like a very ironic, ironical, you know, very ir- irony. It's, it's an irony, really. Why? Because it says, and they found no water. What does that imply? And they found no water. Very simple. They were looking for water. You have to understand, friends, they were in the wilderness three days. Their supplies were exhausted. But it's amazing. For we are told that Moses, in the book Patriots and Prophet, that Moses, who was familiar with this region, this Patriots and Prophets 2, 91, paragraph 2, knew what others did not. What did Moses know? It says that at Mara, which was the nearest station of springs, there was to be found water unfit for use. With intense anxiety, he watched the guidance of the cloud. Remember, Moses was keeping his eyes on the cloud. The people were keeping their eyes on Moses. But Moses wasn't leading the people. God was leading the people. God was with the people. Physically, his presence was there. Now, it's interesting now that God was with them. They were wondering. They were exhausting their resources in terms of water. And now, the implication of the text is that they were looking for water and couldn't find it. They had a need. And this need needed to be met. Yet still, the the irony of the situation is that God was right there. And they were looking for water. Now, we are told clearly in verse 23, And when they came to Marah, they could not find, sorry, they could not drink of the water of Marah, for they were what? Bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. Hence our title, Bitter Mara. 
Which brings us to our second point, friends. That even though God is with us, we will still sometimes have to experience bitter times. You know, someone may say, I've chosen to leave the world and follow Jesus Christ. Now I'm on my upward course. But ironically, or interestingly, we realize that there's still bitterness along the way. Ruth, let's go to Ruth and get a definition for this bitterness. Let's go to Ruth. Ruth uh, chapter 1. Let's go to Ruth. Now, Bibles, quickly. Ruth uh, chapter 1. <clears throat> going to look at something here. Ruth. All right. Ruth. Are you there in Ruth? Could we have the Ruth on the screen also? Ruth. For those that are following along. Ruth 1. And we're going to, chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 19 through 21. Ruth 19 through 21. Ruth 1, Ruth 1, 19, verse 19 through 21. Are you there? And it's also on the screen. Notice what we are told here. And so they too went until they came to Bethlehem. This is Ruth. We know the backdrop of Ruth. Ruth now has lost everything. And everyone that seems important in our life, her husband is dead, her children is dead. And now all is left is her and who else? And who? Well, Na sorry about that. Naomi, sorry about that. Thank you very much. Naomi, her children is gone. Her spouse is dead also. And now who alone is left with her? Ruth, her daughter-in-law. Watch this now, friends. So they're on their course back to Bethlehem because of what is taking place in this Moabitish country. Watch this now. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, is this Naomi? Verse 20. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, but call me what? Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out what? Full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why then call me Naomi, seeing the Lord has what? Testified against me. And the Almighty has what? Afflicted me. So in other words, friends, we get the impression that some will experience bitter experiences, difficulties, misfortune, disappointment, discouragement. But remember that God will see us true. You see, my friends, as we go back to Exodus, the 15th chapter, we see that here was a need that needed to be supplied. They could not find water even though God was with them. And so as a result, they experienced a bitter situation. They were thirsty. No water to drink. And the water was bitter. Friends, oftentimes, life has a way to deal its bitter cup. Sometimes when it seems as if we're already going through it, it gets worse. I hope somebody knows what I'm talking about. But I'm assured that sometimes it has to get worse before it gets better. For when we're down to nothing, friends, that's the time that faith should tell us that what? 
God is up to something for what? No good thing will he withhold from them that walk what? Uprightly. And when you're down, flat on your back, friends. When you're down to the guttermost, all you can do is go up. You see, your circumstance may be very low. You may feel forsaken. You may feel betrayed. You may feel like others have did you wrong. Maybe you're going through something, sickness, pain. I don't know what it is. But all I'm saying is that even though God is with us, we still have to go through bitter times. Hold on to God. Don't give up. Keep trusting God through the process. He knows what he's doing. I want to remind you of David. It wasn't easy for David. David, a man of God's own heart, we are told. David sought to follow God. Of course, not when he was seeking after Bathsheba and what he did. But we know that David is said to be a man of his own heart. Why? Because David sought after God. But what happened to David? What happened to David? Is your situation isolated? You know, often what the enemy does, he makes us feel like we are the only ones. I'm the only one going through what I'm going through. God, why me? No, the question is, why not you? Look what David went through. David was persecuted and pursued like he was the enemy, even though he had done nothing wrong. Many a times David could have killed Saul, but David was more honorable than Saul. But nonetheless, he had a bitter pill to take. David went through many of sojourning like a pilgrim. Why? Because he did nothing. Joseph. What did Joseph ask for? Do you remember the story of Joseph? What did Joseph ask for? For his brothers to sold him into slavery. Have you have ever been forsaken? Have you have ever felt forsaken? Have you ever felt betrayed by those that you love? Think about Joseph. Yet still God had a plan for Joseph's life. It was to preserve lives. You see, they thought... That they were selling Joseph to get rid of Joseph. But Joseph said, what you thought to do for evil, God meant it for good. For here am I today to preserve life. I want to tell you, friends, maybe, just maybe, what you're going through is to preserve someone else's life. You see, friends, you can't really have a testimony unless you are tested. And oftentimes, when we go to our bitter cup, it is not always easy. But I want to reassure you, God is with us. God has not forsaken us. While we still have to go through our crucible, God is there with us because God has a purpose. He's working through our situation. Maybe, just maybe, your sickness is a testimony to someone that they can hold on to God or receive Jesus Christ. You see, the story is often told of a minister that wanted to reach this intellectual. Maybe I've told it before. That was in his congregation. You know, he was coming uh, service after service and he wanted to reach him. And so he put together a series of intellectual messages. And he went and he, and he preached and he, he labored. And, he, and, and, and after everything was said and done, the intellectual gave his heart to Christ. And of course, he was baptized and he was received into fellowship. And the minister, just feeling confident in himself, almost like he wanted to pat himself on the back, saw the intellectual and he said to him, you know, by reason, which one of those sermons aroused you and caused you to make a change in your life to give your life to Jesus. I'm curious to know. 
An intellectual said to him, I want to tell you this much. You know, really, never really connected with me much. But what really made an impression is that I remember I was leaving one of your sermons and I was walking out. And there was a little old lady. And something fell. And, you know, it was a little old lady in her pain and her struggles. But you know what? She couldn't get down and get to it. And so she asked the man if he could pick it up. And as he was taking it up quickly, because he almost insisted by preemptively seeing that she needed assistance. And, and he picked it up. And as she, he was coming up, she said to him, young man, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? And he said, he left that moment thinking about it and he couldn't sleep. And he dreamt about it. And he purposed in his heart that the next occasion he had, he would give his life to Jesus Christ. You see, sometimes, friends, it is in our discomfort that God can bring comfort to someone else. Oftentimes, our misfortune is the opportunity that God uses to bless someone else. You see, this lady was in her pain. She was struggling. She was faithful. Yet still, did little did she know that her circumstance could have softened and subdued the heart and prepared the entrance for her words to take root for someone to give their life to Jesus Christ. You see, my friends, I'm often, I often think about Daniel. Daniel was cast into the lion's den. What did Daniel do? The records state that he was perfect. What did Daniel do? Yet still, how did Daniel feel? Did Daniel say that God forsook him? Daniel still trusted God in the lion's den. What about Esther? What about Elijah? What about Paul? What about John the Baptist? All these men went through different circumstances that tested them. Yet still, God was still with them. They had to go through it. I want to bring the assurance to us to know as Second Peter 3 and verse 12 says, Yea! And all that live godly in Christ Jesus, not may, but shall suffer persecution. Why do you think that your circumstance is different from anybody else? You see, my friends, God has called us to suffering. We are told, friends, that the highest privilege that any disciple can have is to partake in the suffering for Christ. And so, friends, God has called us to suffering. It is not always easy, but we are told that Jesus learned obedience through the things which he suffered. And so God is perfecting our characters. In fact, Psalms 37 and verse 25 says, I've been young and now I am old. Yet I have what? I had not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor is seed begging bread. God is faithful, brethren. And God will see us true. In fact, turn with me quickly to uh, 2 Corinthians. Let's look at this one together. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. Let's notice what Paul, Paul that had a thorn in the flesh. Paul that was persecuted. Paul that was beaten. Paul that was forsaken by his own countrymen. Paul that was shipwrecked. Paul that been through so much. Notice what Paul says, and if you can put it on the screen also, notice what Paul says in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and uh, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. Notice what the Bible says as we read together. It says, For a what? Light affliction, which but for a moment worked for a, for us, a what? A far more what? Exceeding an eternal weight of glory. 
Verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are what? Temporal, Temporal but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. You see, God has an eternal plan for us. And all we can see sometimes is what we are going through. But notice what Paul says, that I've been through so much. Paul says that our light affliction. Remember, my friends, that God is the one that turns up what? The temperature gauge. At times you feel like it's too hot. But God knows what he's doing. At times it feels as if we cannot endure. But some way, somehow we are enduring. I want to say that God is keeping you. God is sustaining you. You see, I don't know what your moral is, what your bitter experience is, what your difficulty is, what your problem is beyond your ability to solve, what your circumstance may have been, whether it's sickness, whether it's misfortune, whether it's financial downturn, whether it's stress, whether, my friends, it's brokenness, whether it's joblessness, whether it's failed plans, failed goals, family problems, mental or emotional problems, depression, discouragement, disappointment, grief, pain, heartache, anxiety, worries, fear. Maybe even you're struggling. I want to say look to Christ. God will not forsake us. In fact, Jeremiah 32 and verse 27, he asks a question there. Is there anything too hard for God? You see, God is able to enter into our situation. And while God may not take you out, God will give you the grace to sustain you. You see, God has a plan. Now, it's interesting as we continue our story line is that the irony is that while they had to go through it even though God was leading them God was there with them now you would ask your question what you would ask yourself the question what did they do since they could not find water since they had a need and they had the same mighty God that parted the Red Sea what do you think they did let's look at verse 24, what would you have done? What are you doing right now? Are you doing the same thing that they're doing? Let's look what they look. They did. Verse uh, 24 of Exodus 15. It says, And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? It's easy to murmur when we're going through difficult times. It's easy to point the finger. It's easy to say, God, where are you in my moment of distress? But they didn't say, God, where are you? They knew God was with them. But they, they murmured to Moses. You know, oftentimes, we won't take up our, our problems to God because we have some choice words. We are disappointed. We feel forsaken. We feel hurt. We feel even angry at times. And we won't take it up with God because you know what? We can't fight God. But we'll take it up with the visible leader in front of us. Are you with me, brethren? All our disgruntlements. You know, if, if only Pastor Shattuck did this. If only Ella Wallace did this. You know, brethren, we forget at times who is leading. We forget... That, that God is with us even in our difficulties. That there's nothing too hard for God. And because God don't take you out of your circumstance. Don't mean that God is still not good. God is still good friends. God still is sitting on his throne. In his calm eternity. Working out your fears of man. God is still working for our best interests. Even though at times we cannot see it. 
And so they murmured against Moses. Now, it's amazing that they murmured. And at times we do murmur too. Now, the question that follows naturally is what should they, what, what should have they done? What should have they done? Or rather, what should they have done? Thank you very much. What should they have done? What should they have done? Right? Let's look at verse 25 and 26 together. Let's read it together. And they what? Cried unto who? The Lord. Do you see number one what they should have done? You know, it's interesting that Moses cried unto the Lord. It's easy sometimes to get lost in our circumstance. At times we get to, you know, we forget to do that which should be very obvious as a Christian. Number one is that we should always pray. I know it may sound cliche, friends, but God wants us to have a vital connection with him. At times our prayer don't have to be fanciful. We don't have to make up words and try to put things together. We're not trying to impress God here, friends. You know, I've remembered circumstance when I was in a distress and my prayer was, Jesus, help me. Sometimes your prayer don't have to be, you know, very formal. We're talking about heart, sincere prayer. Prayer that touches God, friends. And those prayers are the prayer that recognize your need and appeal to God sincerely. You see, they should have appealed to God, cried out to God. We are told that Moses cried unto God. Of all the million plus people, nobody thought to pray to God. That's the irony, friends. God was with them, but they did not cry unto God. They murmured against Moses. I want to assure you that God is just a prayer away. And oftentimes we bear grief and sorrow. Why? Because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. God is closer than we think. He's with us. He has not gone anywhere. God has not forsaken us. He's still there, friends. In your pain, God is there. And if we'll just cry out to him... God will hear us, and whether he take us out or he don't take us out, God will give us comfort. God will make a solution. God will bring some solution in our difficulty to allow us to bear what we are going through. Secondly, let's continue reading. So it says that Moses cried unto the Lord, and... The Lord showed him a what? Tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made what? Sweet. There he made for them a what? Statue and what? An ordinance. And there he proved them and said, If thou wilt what? Diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to all his commandment and keep his statutes. I will put none of these diseases which these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And so we see the second thing here, friends, that they should have done is that they should have trust and obey God. You see, friends, the song says, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. So when we have prayed now, friends, we should trust God and obey him. Now, you may say, well, I don't know everything to obey, but trust him and obey in that which God has revealed to you. Whatever light God has brought to you, Trust God and obey him. When God says, put the tree in the water, 
friends, all we have to do is obey. Can you imagine Moses was complaining to God, but God, the water is bitter. I'm going through such a difficult time. Now, it seemed very simple, right? Moses took a tree and he, th you know, he threw it in the water at the command of God. And as a result, what happened? The water became sweet. Now, a question for you. Was it a different body of water? You see, my friends, oftentimes God don't take us out of our situation. But I do believe that what can sweeten our prayer is what can sweeten, sweeten our situation is prayer. It's a, a trust in God. The Bible says it in Isaiah clearly, thou will keep him in what? Perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed upon thee. Why? Because he trusted in thee. I want to tell you, your circumstance may not change. But God has a way to sweeten those circumstances with prayer and trust. God wants us to trust him more, friends. And to depend upon him and to obey his words. The third point quickly is that we need to believe his promises. He said, I will not bring, the promise was that I will, I will not, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I will not bring any of the diseases which I have brought upon the Egyptians upon thee. God's promise is sure, friends. We can take it to the bank. And as a result, we find that the reason why we go through so much heartache is bad enough we have to drink of that bitter pill. It's bad enough that sometimes we have to go through what we have to go through. But sometimes we're not praying. We're not agonizing with God. And remember, agonizing is not length of prayer. But anguish of soul is crying out to a prayer here in God. It's telling God exactly how we feel. In fact, we're more likely to tell our friends, our neighbors, our associates. But God is there. You see, they, all they could see is Moses. But God was there. And so we can sweeten our experience. Whether it's sickness. We can pray for strength. Where there's marital issues, we can pray for comfort. Where there's brokenness, we can ask God to come and put together our brokenness and mend our circumstance. Where there's family problems, God is still the one, the divine counselor. Whether it is mental problems, God can restore our mind back where it needs to be. Whether it's fear, God can give us peace in the midst of our fear. Whether it's pain, God can comfort us while we are in pain. Whether it's disappointment, God can lift our spirits. Whether it's discouragement, God can give us hope. Whether it's depression, God can show us that there's still a light at the end of the talent. And that our situation, though it seems bad, is not as bad as it could be. Oftentimes, we magnify what we are going through, not knowing that somebody else is going through worse. You see, while we complain about the pain in the foot, someone don't have a foot to complain about. Let us give God thanks for his promises. God is sure, friends. I don't want to belittle what you're going through. I don't want to minimize what you're going through. But I want to say this much to you, that God is still in control. Let us praise him even in our distress. Let us cry unto God even in our distress. Let us trust him when we cannot trace him. Knowing that God has an expected end for us, let us believe his promises. They are sure, friends, and we can take them to the bank. And God is faithful that will not suffer us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. God will always make a way of escape. God is always making a way of escape. And I want to tell you this much. While you think you couldn't go above that mountain, that mountain that was before you, it's interesting that when you find yourself on the other side, you only can confess and say, God, 
it was only you alone that saw me through. I don't know how you did it. When I was going through my pain, when nobody understood, when tears and uh, pain was rocking my body or sickness or affliction or whatever your circumstances, God was still there for you. God came through for you. And we have nothing to fear for the future, friends. Except we forget how God has led us in time past. Reflect upon what God has done for you. Has not God come through for you before? Is this your first time going through a situation that you couldn't solve and God came through and you gave him the glory? You see, they had just seen their enemies get decimated before their eyes, not because of their strength. In fact, they were backed up against the wall, enemies behind, Red Sea before. And the command came, go forward. They didn't know where. Where should we go forward? But of course, forward was only in the sea. See, sometimes forward is in a place that we cannot see a way out. But God will make a way for you. God will open up the Red Sea if necessary and he'll bring you through. So let's not forget what God has done for us. Let's not be like the children of Israel only three days and they forgot that there was still a God above that could make miracles, a way making God, a miracle working God, a God that was a healer, a God that would supply their needs, a God that understood their fears, a God that already was making provision before they were calling. God knew that they would want water, friends. Let me tell you, God knows that you need comfort. God knows that you need a job. God knows your Mara experience is going on now. God understands. And I want to tell you, just keep holding on. Keep trusting. Keep depending upon God. Because God is going to see you through. And lastly, our third point. So we have looked thus far that God is with us in the first place. Even though we have to go through our bitterness, God is with us. We have seen in the second place that God, even though God is with us, we still have to endure bitterness. We are not exempted from it, friends. We are told that everyone must die unless Jesus comes. The old will die. The young will die. The righteous will die. The sinner will die. And so the idea is this, friends, that we all have to go through something. We are told that everybody had flies in Egypt. Nobody was exempted. And so everybody has to deal with it. But I want to tell you this moment, this afternoon, that our God is able to see us through. And so in the last place, God will give us an expected end if we are willing to trust and obey. God will give us an expected end if we are willing to trust and obey. Now, what were they complaining about? Water. Let's read final verse. Verse 27 of Exodus 15. It says, and they came to what? Elam. Where there were what? Twelve wells of water. And three score and ten palm trees. And they encamped, encamped there by the waters. Now it's amazing how God had it all along in his mind. I know you couldn't see it. But God has an expected end for your friends. Jeremiah 22, I mean 29, let's go there quickly. Jeremiah 29, let's go there. Jeremiah 29, and I want you to jot this one down. You see our God is faithful, friends. And he's an on-time God. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. There you go. 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts. That I think towards you. Said the Lord. Thoughts of what? Peace. 
and not of evil. To give you what? You know what an expected end is? Is the same end that you would want. That the same end that you would delight in. Is the same end that you've always desired. Is the same end that's going to fulfill your joy. God is looking out for our best interest, friends. Oh, yes. The conclusion of the matter, friends, is that while on our pilgrim's journey, we may have to go through our more experience. Let us remember that God is with us. Let us remember that even though God is with us, we still have to endure difficulties and trials like anybody else. God has an expected. Why? Because God has an expected end for his people. You see, God is fitting us for eternity. And in this life, while we have to go through trials, he has said, in this world, ye may have what? Tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. My friends, because Jesus overcame, we are able to overcome. You know, friends, I know that sometimes we're ready to give up. Ready to give up on God. I want to say, don't give up on God. Trust him in your moral experience. Trust him when you cannot trace him. Depend upon God. Pray more fervently. Believe more fervently. Trust God more fervently. Don't let the enemy separate you. We have gone too far. Too far we have come to believe that God will forsake us. You see, my friends, it's interesting that while they were in the wilderness, God never forsook them. God was with them in the wilderness. Eventually, we know what should have taken 11 days took what? 40 years. But where was God? Right there with them. God never forsook them. And I want to tell you this afternoon. That God will not forsake you. Keep your head up. Keep trusting God. Don't become in despair or discouragement. Trust him. Yes, I admit it's not always easy. I admit based on our study, God may not take away your pain entirely. But God has a way of sweetening your experience if you'll depend upon him. God has a way of sweetening your experience if you'll trust him. God has a way to carry you through and to give you that which you would have wanted if you'd only trust him. What a thing like that. Twelve wells of water. Not just one. Twelve. Keep holding on. Your deliverance is coming. Keep trusting. And even if it's not in this life, there is coming a day when there will be no more pain, no more sickness, no more suffering. I look no more dead, Sister Mark. I look forward to that day. My prayer is that we'll hold on to God. Now is not the time to give up. My friends, we are at the end. We are nearing home. We don't give up at the end of a race. We have to persevere. Even if we have to crawl in the kingdom of heaven. Keep pressing. Keep pushing. Keep trusting. Alas, I know that thou will hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And sooner we'll be done with the troubles of this earth. May God bless you. May we continue to be faithful. May we trust him. May as we're going through our moral experience, we know that God will not forsake us. God will see us through. God will carry us. He that has begun a good work in me shall perform it when? Until the day of Jesus Christ. God is going to carry you through. I don't know how, but I know that he will because he has said so. And God is not like man to lie. So keep trusting. And may God bless us as we continue to depend upon him. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, indeed you know the struggles of your people. Yet still you have not forsaken us. We thank you that we can cry unto you like Moses. We thank you, Lord, that you're still trustworthy. We thank you, Lord, that you're a God that holds your promises. And they are true. And when it seems as if our back is against the wall, you will make a way for us. 
Oh God, I pray you may lift every spirit this afternoon. I pray that you may enter into every situation and that indeed your people may hope thou in God, knowing that, Lord, you will see them true, that you are intimately acquainted with the feelings of our infirmities. You care, Lord. You still understand. And Lord, you are protecting us. You are still in control of the temperature gauge. I praise you this morning. And I commit every difficulty to you. I commit the varied circumstance that we are feeling. And I pray, Lord, that you may see us true. Encourage us. Hold our hands. Carry us if necessary. Never let us go. But help us to know that at last, Lord, that you will welcome us into that pearly gates if we keep trusting you. Bless us to this end and continue to help that we'll purpose in our heart that we will trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Thank you, Lord, even for the difficulties in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>